Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do the graph for the toothpicase lab. So over here, I have the instruction for the toothpicase lab, and I also have a, a, one of the sample data. Okay. So what we did during this experiment was we broke toothpicks under different scenarios, pretending that our hands are uh, the enzymes and the toothpicks are the substrate. And as we are breaking the toothpicks, we are making products using the enzymes, right? And then under different scenarios, you might break, be able to break the toothpick faster, you might be able to break the toothpicks more slowly. So that's what we're trying to figure out during this experiment, okay? Um, so for this lab, it's asking you to make uh, a graph using the data that you got and the data that's given, okay? So, but, but how do you make a graph? You might not necessarily know that. So let's take a look together. Over here, I have um, a sample engineering paper. Um, so you could just, you, you, if you have engineering paper, great. If you don't, you can print one out. Um, so you want some boxes and grids to kind of make, make the graph look much better, you know? Okay. Um, so you don't want to graph uh, using your computer this time. I want to see how you can graph using your hands. Okay. So for this one, it says there are some requirements. It says, well, not necessarily, not really requirements, but, uh, you know, suggestions to help you with the graph. So we have the x axis is time. So you can write time. Whoops. Let's use a smaller marker. Whoops. All right. That should work. So the x axis is time. The x axis is always um, the one that's going horizontally. Okay. And this is also the independent variable. So, so that's what's causing the change, right? So over time, what happened, right? Over time, there were different numbers of total toothpicks broken. So our y-axis will be um, total toothpicks broken, right? Notice that on the x-axis, there's a unit S, right? So that's because we're, we're using seconds as our unit, right? If you don't tell me what unit it is, I might think it could be minute. It could be something else. I don't really know, right? And then the y-axis, two space broken, uh, that doesn't really need a unit. So now, um, before you start drawing on your graph, you have to put some labels on it. So the uh, we start at zero, right? Over time, right? So, so time is the x-axis we have to figure out where are we going to put the time. There are 120 seconds in total. So you kind of want to spread that out a little bit. Let's see how many grids we have. One, two. Okay, so we have 13 grids. Uh, so we can just do, um, for each grid, we could do 10, 20, 30, 40. So it's each one of these little dots. Okay, so I'm not gonna mark that, um, but that should make sense to you. 50s. Maybe 100, 10, 120. Okay, so we did 120 seconds. Uh, if you have more space, then you can spread it out more. If you have less space, you can squish it a little bit. Um, but either way, you want to make sure that between each time interval, the space in between is the same, right? So this is 10 seconds. This is another 10 seconds. So it should be the same exact space, right? So if my 20 seconds is over here and 30 seconds is over here, that doesn't make sense, right? Because then the spacing is off. Right? So that's, that's something you want to pay attention to when you're graphing. Now we need to take a look at the y-axis. So the y-axis uh, is the total number of two spikes pro broken. Um, let's see, how many two picks did we break up most? So you want to set up your graph where you can fit all the data. My dog, when we went hiking. Anyway, so, uh, so this is the sample data. So I'm just going to go off of this. Um, OK, the most number of, data, uh, of two spikes that we can break is 40, right? So we'll just go from there, because we only have 42 spikes. Um, OK, so we'll make. All right, so we'll make this 40, right? So see how now I'm making the numbers spread out a little more because I can. The x-axis, oh, screwed up. The x-axis and the y-axis uh, don't have to be exactly the same in terms of the spacing of the numbers, right? Because we're talking about two, two different things. Does that make sense? I think about this for a second, right? On the x-axis is time. The y-axis has nothing to do with time uh, as of now, right? We're just looking at total two space broken. So in that case, um, the spacing can be off, right? Like 10 is right here, but this is also 10, but we're talking about two different 10s, so that's fine. All right. 
Now we're going to plot the data. All right. So I'm going to plot one data for you so you know how to do it. And then you're going to do the rest on your own. Okay. So this is uh, round one. Round one, we have at 10 seconds, right? So 10 seconds, we're looking at the x axis right here. 10 seconds, there were four toothpicks broken. So we know this is five. You don't have to label that, but you should have an idea of that. So this right here is about four. Okay. Uh, and we're saying that. Round one, we should use empty circles. That's just to help you differentiate between the different groups of data. So we're gonna do round one right here. Okay, so that's, we did this. 30 seconds, all right, now we're looking at 30 seconds, which is right here. So we're going off of the x axis and then the y axis should be 15, right? So, so really how it works, I'm gonna show you, really how what you're trying to do is you're trying to find a dot on the graph where both the requirement of the x axis uh, of the independent variable and the dependent variable are matching, right? So if I were to draw a circle right here, that matches 30 seconds, 15 toothpicks broken, right? So that's what that's what you're doing. Um, but I'm going to erase this because you don't really need this, right? So that that helps you figure out how to do the graph. So you could you could, you could do that um, if you're not really sure how to do it. But over time, you'll just be able to kind of see, right? We have 30 seconds. 30 seconds right here and then we have 15 two space broken, broken right there all right moving on we have 60 seconds and 22 two space broken right so 60 seconds is right here 22 so this is 25 i'm just going to label all of these i guess 35 right so that's 25 so 22 is about a little bit uh halfway down what did i just do all right this circle right here will be Right, let's check 60 seconds, 22. Okay, on to the last one, 120. So that's 120 right here, 120 seconds. And then 35 is, uh, should be right in the middle right here. So that will give you a dot right here, right? So now you wanna connect the dot to kind of see uh, you know what exactly happened over time. So we can start at zero. So you wanna make this, kind of smooth, but if it's not totally smooth, that's also fine, right? So what we're seeing is uh, over time we broke more toothpicks. Okay, so now what do we do, right? So it's saying that you need to, you need a key for each round because we have four rounds. So how, how do you do that? Um, you need to show me what the lines are about, right? There's, there are gonna be four lines. There are four groups of data. Uh, how is that gonna work? So on the side, you can just draw a circle and say, round one, or you can say control, right? Because round one is our control, right? Round two is uh, double enzyme, right? So when you're gra graphing your round two, you should use a little triangle or you can use a different color if you have four different colors, that's fine too. Um, but the key is you have to give me a key, right? Otherwise, I don't know what you're talking about. There are four lines, which one is which? How am I supposed to know? How, how would you remember the day after, right? So then we have the third one, which is the square. The square one is, I remember, the cat is in my face. Let's see. Oh, competitive inhibitor. Competitive inhibitor. And then the last one, I just came up with a filled in circle to do that. And then the last one is called, um, oh, enzyme denature. Right, so if you can't remember what is the enzyme nature, that's when the enzyme was approaching, it falls apart. When it falls apart, it doesn't work anymore. Okay, or it doesn't work as well. It's not supposed to work at all, but you get the idea. Um, all right, so let's pretend. I don't wanna show you how to graph all of them because that's your job, um, but I'll just do a pretend data, see if this makes sense to you, okay? So I'm gonna use a different color. So um, it's a little easier to see. Let's pretend that the second group of data, which is not what it actually is, because I want you to graph it, is double enzyme. So let's just say this one is five. This is 18, 30, 38, okay? What would the graph look like if we're adding the second group of data onto the same graph? What's that gonna look like? So we're still doing 10 seconds, right? So this is my first data point. And then my second data point is 30 seconds and then 18. So 18 will be right here, right? 60 seconds, 30 is right here. 
in 120 seconds uh, with 38 is right here on the graph, right? So if you look at it, for example, this last data point does it match 120 seconds, it does. Looking across, it's about 38, okay? So now you're gonna draw a line connecting these dots. All right, so now you have two lines, right? So on your graph, in the end, you should have four lines because there are four groups of data. One other thing that will make your graph good and complete is to add a, um, a title for it. So for this graph, I'm gonna give it a title. So you, the title, you always want, it, want to use it to describe what's going on in the graph, right? So it's kind of like a summary of your essay kind of situation. So we have time, we have total two space and we have different conditions. So we could say the number of toothpicks broken over time under different enzyme conditions. Right? So 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 that kind of sums up what this experiment is about and what the what the graph is about. So why do we why do we graph? The graph is to help you understand your data more easily, right? So you have this data, we did, did the experiment. How can we make this more visual, right? So right now you can see that clearly the second round, pretending that's the second round, don't do those exact numbers, that's not the right numbers. Those uh, the second round is higher than the first round, which makes sense. If you double the, the number of enzymes and you have a lot of substrate. We're going to break a lot more substrate and form more products, right? So your enzymatic or enzyme reaction rate, how fast the reaction would happen, would also be faster. Okay, so that's all I have for you. I hope this is helpful. Um, I hope you'll be able to graph this correctly after watching this video. You really should. If you have questions, ask me. Bye.